So I thought I'd do a little video of making uh, my method of making a PCB um, from scratch, um, which is the quickest, I suppose, and it's it's quite accurate. It makes uh, tracks down to maybe 0.5 mil quite successfully using DIY methods. So um, it's just the ferric chloride etch etching method with um, just a copper PCB, and you're just doing a single sided. So we have the copper PCB. We have the photo paper, which we'll laser pr print onto for the silk screen uh, piece of plain paper, which we'll laser print onto. Petrol for cleaning stuff. We have um, ferric chloride for etching, which we'll use later. Um, isopropyl alcohol for cleaning stuff. Uh, petrol for cleaning off the toner of the PCB. Couple of containers, uh, one for ferric chloride and one for the liquid tin, which is this stuff, which has a nice little skull and crossbones on it, and that uh, we use to uh, protect the copper once it's etched. Um, so that's it, I think. Oh, one more thing, uh, we use an LED light um, to check the PCB um, as we're etching it. Uh, just to make sure that we've uh, etched away all of the copper. So this is the everyday picture paper. It's just Kodak. Um, and I find that that's pretty good compared to any other brand, but you can try. Um, mileage may vary as they say. So there's the design we want to print. Uh, so we print. I'm going to print the bottom copper. So we put the Well, so that's our paper. So we're going to iron that on to the PCB now. So we have the PCB and we're just going to upside down, obviously. So we're going to iron that on. Also, I normally just cut off a few of the corners. And I leave one end so that we can pull it off. So this will now go onto the PCB and we'll iron it on. First we'll clean the PCB to make sure that it has no grease or fingerprints or anything on it. Okay, so we'll just let it dry off now in a second. So as well as the design of the PCB printed on the paper, we also have a bit of greaseproof paper and that's to go on top to stop the um, to make it easier to smooth around the um, we'll just put that on there up to the edge then we'll put on our greaseproof paper so we just put good firm pressure on it Good firm leaning down on the iron and we're just making sure we get the edges because the edges are a key part of it. There's the timer. Now we can see a good edge along here. Looks like it's bonded nicely. Yeah, so that looks quite good. So, there's some water. I'll just plug out the iron. I'm not going to need that anymore. So, we just drop this in. And let it soak for a minute or two. I think that's probably enough. So, in one clean swoop, we're just going to... unsuccessful now we shouldn't have any toner left on that so i wasn't pressing hard enough so i'm going to do it again but it's quite easy because i'll just show you what i do with the pcb
let's go again let's print so here we have the pcb again oops we have printed the silk screen let's try again now third time lucky okay so this time I'm going to put a bit of cardboard underneath or some newspaper. Okay. Now, I think we have a reasonable bond there, we do. Let's get the water. Pop in. Now, in one clean swoop, we're just going to pull off the paper. Now, not bad. Okay, we might need to fill in a couple of little bits there, but that's not bad. Um, Okay, so you see there's a bit of, um, we can just roll off that paper there. It's pretty resilient. I mean, it's pretty, okay, there I can see where it's not 100%. Yeah, not bad. Normally with the tin tracks, you see there in the middle with the tin tracks, you need to give it a, a bit of a scrub. You have to take it's worth taking your time on this because it saves you having to fix later. Okay, I can fill that in with a sharpie. Maybe it's like there's a track that definitely needs to be filled in with a Sharpie. Okay, so, Sharpie time. So I just did off camera, I, I, I cut the, um, cut the ends off, took the bits off, I just scored each side with a Stanley knife and uh, broke it off to fit the, to better fit the, um, the container and to take off the excess because we don't need to take off that copper because it's just waste anyway. So time to put on the gloves and get ready for the dangerous stuff. Now this is dangerous, you need to be wearing glasses, you need to be in a ventilated room and you need to have, you know, gloves on. So what we have here is the three containers, one with PCB, ferric chloride, one with water to rinse it off, and then we check it with the light. So I have it in this old container, it's got crossbones, Let's mix it up because it's been previously used, and then we'll just pour some in slowly and carefully. I'll cover it well, so I can leave this off somewhere. Our newspaper in case it drips. So now we can agitate that. Uh, this would take maybe, I don't know, five to 10 minutes, depending on the temperature of the ferric chloride. So I'll drip off. Don't shake too hard. You don't want to spread this stuff around. It'll stain anything it touches. And just 
wash her off. Now, if we were to put um, onto our light, you know, we still, oh, we're coming through. It's getting a lot thinner. Yeah, that's looking pretty good so far. So, yeah, so we can still see we've copper left here. We've copper in the traces, but it's doing its job pretty good. Let's go back in to finish it off. But it's borderline done. Again, if we look at our tin traces, they look very close. Even if you hold that up, see there. Not bad. Look at those tin traces, they're looking okay. Sharpies stuff held well. Trace I drew on here. Looks like but no, it looks spot on if you can see here. You can't. Okay. That's uh, too bright. Maybe there you can see it looks perfect to me and all the rest of it. So because we can see through, that means there's no copper. So the copper is in the black area and exposed PCB is in the light area. Okay, so we're back to the petrol. Gasoline. And you end up with a beautiful shiny PCB. Look at that. That's where I scraped it with the pliers as I was taking it out. Too early, scraped off the toner. Um, and I thought I'd put a uh, Sharpie on that, but it was too late. But I can fix it anyway in post. Just jump it with a bit of solder. Yeah, quite nice and the tracks look quite good. Smallest tracks look quite good. I'm gonna do a continuity check on that. Solder it all up and drill it all, drill it all up, solder it all up, and then continuity check it all and then it'll, I'll have to silk screen the other side now. Let's do that. One more thing I wanted to do before I put on the silk screen. And that was just to um, use this stuff, which is liquid tin. Now what it does is it takes the copper and uh, it turns it to a silver car. So it puts a tin layer. So we just dump it all in. So that's the PCB done with the liquid tin. It's every bit as easy to solder, if not easier, than just plain copper as a tin surface. And it stays that color long term. So for the next bit, um, I use a drill. I need to drill a couple of holes in each corner to as a reference because I can't see through to the other side. So when I print out my, my, my the design I want to uh, print onto this, I need a reference point. So I'm going to drill a one mil hole here and on the other corner, I'm going to drill a 1.2 mil, which is the size that these holes need to be. So I have some really small drill bits. That's a one mil and that's a 1.2 mil. So they're too small for the drill. I don't have a kind of a mini CNC, which would be ideal. But um, with a bit of tape around them, I can actually drill. So 
Now to do the silk screen, I've printed out the silk screen, front silk screen in mirrored, because as we look at the PCB, we printed that the right way because it's gonna be upside down. As we look at the PCB, this is gonna be laid down like this to imprint it down on that. So we want to print it mirrored. So now what we do is um, make the holes in the right spot and line it up with what's on the PCB. So we'll use the two drill bits that we used earlier because they're the right size and we'll poke holes in the paper in the right place. So for this one, we want the third hole down here, which is right there. And we want the opposite corner down here, the center of that point there, which is right there. Okay, so we have the two holes. So from the other side, we turn it over and we put where the hole is through. But that's going to be right there. And then the other hole is going to be somewhere. Should just it should just work there. There it is. Yeah, I think that's the right one there. It's, it's worth getting this right because then I think we're slightly out of alignment there. Maybe we are, but anyway, we can give it a lash. That looks like it's pretty close. That looks like it's pretty close. Anyway, it doesn't need to be 100% accurate. As long as it's close enough. So that's that. We need a bit of... Let me see. Okay, we'll put that down there so it doesn't move. Oh yeah, there it is. Grease proof paper. And our iron which I forgot to warm up. Now the iron's warming up. Give it another few seconds. Okay. Ah. Let's see. Looks like we made quite an impression. <laughs> okay. Oh. Not great. Not well. Mm. It's all right. That bit, ESP32 came out okay. Orange Pi Zero is fine. Little gappy bits.
after all the drilling and soldering there's the PCB almost complete there's the standoffs that's it with components and I just have a few here I'm waiting for a delivery and a couple of uh, level shifters here line drivers I'm waiting on what there's my orange pi zero microcontroller usp 32s2 fuses power inputs and so on looks pretty cool works pretty good and with that protection in a waterproof box it'll be pretty good hope the video was helpful cheers